angels are saying. Some periods of our growth are so confusing that we don't even recognize that growth is happening. We may feel hostile or angry or weepy and hysterical, or we may feel depressed. It would never occur to us, unless we stumbled on a book or a person who explained to us, that we were in fact in the process of change, of actually becoming larger, spiritually, than we were before. Whenever we grow, we tend to feel it, as a young seed must feel the weight and inertia of the earth as it seeks to break out of its shell on its way to becoming a plant. Often the feeling is anything but pleasant. But what is most unpleasant is not knowing what is happening. Those long periods when something inside ourselves seems to be waiting, holding its breath, unsure about what the next step should be eventually become the periods we wait for. For it is in those periods that we realize that we are being prepared for the next phase of our life and that in all probability a new level of the personality is about to be revealed. Prayer to many is just a ritual reserved for church services or special occasions. To others, it is something they do when they have a problem or get sick. But prayer is not some ritual or mechanical function. It is something you should live out all day long, just like breathing. Prayer is conversation with God, and effective prayer includes thanksgiving, praise, and petitions. And it works for all kinds of situations, from small to great. And at any time of day or night, prayer demonstrates humility. It's a symbol of your dependence upon God and the humble get the help. As you settle down to sleep tonight, pray and let God know how much you love Him. Thank Him, praise Him, and offer any petitions you may have, knowing He hears and answers prayer. Then enjoy a peaceful night of rest. I have learned that spiritual discontentment is a gift from God. When God is leading you somewhere different or changing you, He puts this thing in our hearts that forces us to get quiet before Him so that we can hear the next steps. It makes you want to do whatever it takes to get to that next place as He is moving and stirring your heart. It makes you adjust locations, friendships, relationships, jobs and churches. Don't be scared of this tugging because God is leading your life. You're in the most beautifully uncomfortable place. Flow with Him. God has a set time for your opportunity. There is a set time for that problem to turn around. A set time for your healing, your promotion, your breakthrough. It may be tomorrow or next week or five years from now. But when you understand the time has already been set, it takes all the pressure off. You won't live worried, wondering when this is ever going to happen. You'll relax and enjoy your life knowing that the promise has already been scheduled and your answer is on the way. God knows the exact timing of your life. He knows the reason for your pain and He understands the suffering you have to endure. He blesses you with patience, love and freedom to handle all coming your way. Your job is to hold the faith and not let it run thin. His hand is on your life, and there is a reason for everything that is happening in your life. He doesn't expect you to know how you're going to get through. He simply blesses you with the chance to work hard in the direction you know best, and He will take care of the rest that is His absolute promise. If it doesn't feel like it's over, it's not, and He wants you to keep pushing. He believes in you and your strength. His love for you is unwavering and always present. There will be seasons in your walk with Christ where things will be difficult and won't make sense. And it's in those difficult times where we tend to think about how much easier it would be if we would just throw in the towel. But God wants His children to have confidence in His Word knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that the ending will be much better than the beginning. When our confidence in God is high, we don't think about throwing in the towel. 
nor will we settle for something less than what we were promised. You may not understand the reasons for why things are the way they are now, but when you start your journey towards the end, things will begin to make much more sense, and you will see that God was working things out for your good the whole time. A try harder to get better mindset has little to do with real transformation. We don't need a new set of tips and techniques that promises to lead us to a deeper life with Jesus, but we can learn to nudge our life in ways that intentionally draw us more deeply into relationship with Jesus. The simple focus of our life habits shifts from working harder to be a better Christian or becoming a good person to knowing Jesus more intimately. And by knowing him much better, we eventually know ourselves much better. That's what this progression reveals. Get to know Jesus well, because the more you know him, the more you'll love him, and the more you love him, the more you'll want to follow him, and the more you follow him, the more you'll become like him, and the more you become like him, the more you become yourself. When is the last time you stopped and thanked God for bringing you to where you are now? It's always a good thing to take time and reflect on God's goodness. If you think about it, he has brought you so far. Stop in the midst of God's provision for you and give him glory and honor for what he's done. The key to your next is to have gratitude for your now. What made me love Christ wasn't that all of a sudden I figured out how to do life. What made me love Christ is that when I was at my worst, when I was at my lowest point, when I absolutely could not clean myself up and there was nothing anybody could do with me, right at that moment, Christ said, I'll take that one. That's the one I want. You know the Bible calls the church Christ's bride, so it's like standing before Jesus completely exposed, all of our flaws and insecurities and worse than that. Our sins are right there in front of his face and against all reason and rationale. The song of grace becomes startlingly, exhilaratingly true because the groom looks at us and declares us beautiful, spotless, righteous, justified. This is the gospel. It is important to admit, believers in Jesus, that Christians are not more moral than anyone else. The essence of the gospel and what we celebrate is not that we can, but that Christ did. Today God wants you to know that his plans for your life are coming to pass, just as he promised. Sometimes we can start looking at our age, the mistakes we've made, where we are in life, and start asking ourselves if the promises of God will ever manifest in our lives. But God wants but now, on this side of the cross, he will never leave us because of our sins. Jesus has taken them all away, even future sins, because he isn't bound by time. Never compare yourself to the people in the Old Testament in regard to your relationship with God. Because of Christ, you have something so much better. They longed for what you now have. The promise made by the Father to the Son and vice versa has caused the Holy Spirit to reside in you permanently. The cross was a huge success. God, you are my source of strength. You are my hope in hard times and my joy at all times. You calm all my fears and deliver me from evil. You protect and provide for me, and you never stop showing me your unfailing love. Thank you for your countless blessings and your miraculous grace. I am so grateful for all that you've done. And so today, I choose to rejoice in you. In Jesus' name, amen. When the expectation of what you thought your life would be and the reality you're living don't match up, it's heartbreaking. And the heartbreak you're carrying makes it not just difficult, but nearly impossible to find God's hand in the midst of it. I used to think I had to force a fake smile and muster up the courage to carry on in the middle of what was breaking my heart. That I had to hold it all together and have everything perfectly in line. 
But I don't think that's what God wants for us at all. I am more convinced than ever that God sees. He knows what's happening. He will not be mocked by what others may be doing to you. And he intimately cares about every detail of what you're walking through. I'm learning that sometimes trading grief for victory means choosing to see what is instead of being blinded by what isn't. It's a tough choice in some moments. Brutal, actually. But it's a battle that is worth fighting. God sometimes tests our faith before we can be trusted with unspeakable favor. Do we trust and believe that the best is yet to come? That we haven't seen half of what God is capable of? Or do we hold on to what's in front of us in fear that it is the best we'll ever get? Just ask yourself, does this look and feel like God's best for me? Does this have God's fingerprints on it? Or is this my own handwriting? Did I write this version of the story on my own? The story God has written for you will always be better than the one you try to write for yourself. Let God be the author of your destiny and love story. Being able to listen to God and trust in His power is a major key to overcoming any obstacle you may face. When we call on God, it's important that we relinquish control and pray for what only He can do. Don't limit your prayers only to situations that don't require much divine intervention to change. Instead, make a habit of praying for big things that only God can do. Invite God to do something incredibly powerful in each situation that you bring to Him, and watch God reveal the answers to overcome. If you're ready to pray a prayer that only God can answer, say this. Lord, I am praying for what only you can do. I am praying for a miracle. I know the source from which it will come. I trust in you to send me a sign. Teach me, dear Lord, to no wonder. If you are willing, I am waiting, ready to receive my blessing today. Amen. God said to me, I know your every hurt, your every tear and every motive of your heart. You and I have walked through this valley and hardship hand in hand. I'm your help. I'm your comforter. I'm your refuge and I'm more than enough. Renew your mind and let me search out your heart. Let me be the gardener of your heart, uprooting the weeds and in their place planting seeds of my love and forgiveness. These seeds will grow and bring you abundant life. I love you, my daughter. I am patient. I am kind and I am present. Keep your eyes on me, not on your circumstances, not on your losses, and not on the opinions or misunderstandings of others. Jesus is our anchor of hope. He is the fulfillment of the Father's love, firm and secure for all eternity. Nothing in all creation can separate us from his extraordinary love. Like the sun above us, Hope in Jesus is constant, vital, life-giving, and always present regardless of whether or not we can see it. The storm clouds of life may blow across, blocking our vision, but the Son of God is still radiant. Time and again, as depression and anxiety have blown across, blocking my ability to see or feel the warmth of Jesus, I have reminded myself to trust in the truth that He is still there. The clouds will pass, and I will see His glory once more. Holy Lord God, Creator of all things, who has commanded our obedience to Your commandments as a sign of our love, look with mercy, I pray, on the sins I have this day committed, and in mercy make me feel them deeply, that my repentance may be sincere, and my resolutions against them steadfast. Teach me to understand the sinfulness of my own heart. Bring to my knowledge every fault of character and every evil habit in which I have indulged, to the discomfort of my fellow creatures and the danger of my own soul. May I now, and every day, consider how my time has been spent what have been my prevailing thoughts, words, and actions, 
and how I might can acquit myself of evil. Have I thought irreverently of you? Have I disobeyed your commandments, neglected a known duty, or willingly given pain to another? Incline me to ask my heart these questions, O Lord, and save me from deceiving myself by pride or verity. Mighty Holy Spirit, face of the one true God, help me, for I have slipped into bad habits. Something in me defies my attempts to change, and I feel compelled to do that which I do not want to do. I feel weak in Eshaved, and I turn to you for help. Help me, dear God. Help me to resist this temptation. Lend me your mighty power to cast it aside. You have graciously promised that you would not let us be tempted beyond our ability, but instead would provide an escape for any temptation we pray to resist. Holy Spirit, show me my escape from my bad habit. Let me resolve to work on it, to pray on it, to turn it into a habit of good. For I know how you love righteous conduct, and my love for you longs to please you. Work your power to help me please you, mighty God, for I know that with your help I can overcome any evil. Heavenly Father, I remember today all the many people who damage or destroy their lives with one of the thousand obsessions that can plague the human mind, the alcoholic and addict, those with eating disorders, those with sexual compulsions, those who are driven to obsessive gambling, the superstitious, those who hoard obsessively and live in squalor, those whose only concern is their appearance or wealth, or any of the myriad baffling and often bizarre behavioral disorders that may affect and burden the lives of your people. Help me first to remember, when I am shocked by their behavior or critical of them, that they are your beautiful children whom you love. Give them the strength to seek help, guide them to people who can help them, and flood them with the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may control their disorders and find peace and contentment on this earth, and the eternal joy that awaits the faithful. I pray this in the name of Christ who loved beyond all love and was always pleased to heal those who came to him in faith. We all face situations in life that feel out of control. During times like these, it's easy to get discouraged and allow fear to creep in. But instead, why don't you focus on the fact that God is holding you in the palm of his hand? There is nothing too difficult for him. Nothing's impossible. Nothing is beyond his ability. When God holds you in his hand, you are safe. You are cared for. In his hand there is victory, in his hand there is strength, in his hand there is provision, in his hand is everything you need. No matter what you may be going through today, you can trust that God is for you. Instead of getting down and depressed over your circumstances, look up and get a vision of God turning that situation around. Let faith arise in your heart and focus on his favor, promotion, and blessing. As you keep your heart and mind focused on Him and choose to obey His word, you'll see those supernatural breaks that will launch you further ahead than you ever thought possible because He holds you with His victorious right hand. You are God's anointed. When people come against you, they're also coming against the God who put the blessing on you. The good news is, you don't have to fight those battles. Don't try to do it in your own strength. You have a defender. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. The people and circumstances you're up against may seem bigger and more powerful, but stay in peace. The blessing on you is greater than what's trying to stop you. The scripture says that what God has blessed, no man can curse. The blessing on you is more powerful than any betrayal, than any negative word spoken over you, than people trying to discredit you. Nobody can take that blessing from you. That means you are blessed no matter what people or circumstances say. Here's the key. The blessing did not come from people, so it cannot be taken away by people. Today, make sure you're paying attention to the signs of the times in your personal life. 
These are periods in which we start to notice ourselves thinking about things we shouldn't, or when we feel ourselves becoming weaker in our spirit man, or when we begin to notice frustration, aggravation, or prayerlessness. The flesh will always try its best to get the advantage over our spirit man. Even with temptation, noticing the signs of the times in which you feel yourself being drawn away will help you run to God before doing something you will later regret. When you're able to recognize these times, the enemy will get the advantage less and less as you grow more and more faithful. God does not want you walking around feeling defeated or full of regret about the past. You've entered a period in your life where God wants to move you out of setbacks, no matter what they may be. You may think that's an impossibility given the mistakes you've made, but God wants you to know that. His arm is still strong and he's still able to give beauty for ashes. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Today, don't make the mistake of standing only on your feelings. We can be more quick to stand on how we feel than we are the Word of God. This isn't good for our spirit man, which grows stronger according to the Word of God. So confess the Word over your life and whatever it is that you may be going through. And after you do that, stand on that Word. God hates sin because of his righteous nature. God loves us because of his loving nature. These two attributes collided most powerfully in one location, the cross. How much does God hate sin? He crushed his own son. The sinless son of God was credited with your sin, and God poured out his fury on his beloved son because Jesus had been credited with your sin. How much does God love you? He crushed his own son on your behalf that you might be forgiven. God's wrath and love are most vividly on display at the cross. If you ever doubt God's settled anger at sin, look at the cross. If you ever doubt how kind, good, and loving God is, look at the cross. Jesus' brutal death on the cross is God's greatest and clearest demonstration of his wrath and love. Have you ever considered whether your life reflects the transformation that comes from being born of God? Are your actions and choices aligned with the values and teachings of your faith? Do you strive to live a life that is pleasing to God and in accordance with his will? Let's consider what this verse has said. In this whole passage, John refers to those who are habitually and characteristically righteous. He that abides in Christ continues not in the practice of sin, for God's seed abides in him. There is something abiding in the heart of the true Christian, which the apostle here calls seed, which will prevent him from sinning. The regenerate life is incompatible with sin and gives the believer a hatred for sin in every shape and an unceasing desire to resist it. The child of God in this conflict receives indeed wounds daily. Sin is ever active, but no longer reigns. Renouncing sin is the great proof of spiritual union with the Lord Jesus Christ. To be born of God is to be inwardly renewed by the power of the Spirit of God. The regenerate person cannot sin as he did before he was born of God. Those who truly belong to God will not habitually engage in sin because they have been changed by their relationship with Him. They have a life characterized by righteousness and a genuine desire to live according to God's will. So I hope our life reflects the life of being born of subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 500 before April. Share this video to your good wishers. Type Amen. Thanks for watching.